Now that you've all grown up, the way, you know, how you act in ways that you don't quite understand many a times, it's because we're still reacting to our parents. Many marriages today are somewhat affected in one way or another because a spouse has never resolved a relationship with a parent and they're still taking it out unconsciously on their spouse or their kids. And yes, today is Mother's Day, but allow me to extend it to someone just as important, which is the fathers. And we're going to head back to what God has to say with regards to our parents. And that's founded in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. If I can just uh, invite all of us, in honour of God's Word, though it's just a verse, to rise to your feet and read this verse aloud. Honour your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Ever Father, this morning, we come and we sit under the authority of your word, your commands. It is not about how we feel, it is not about our preferences, but Father, as sons and daughters, we subject, Lord, ourselves under the authority of your word. And we know when we obey every word spelled out in scriptures, the blessing is our hours. So Father, open the eyes of our heart this morning and cause us to respond to your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please be seated. You know, whilst the first four commandments in the Bible deal with men's relationship with God, the fifth, right through the 10 commandments, deals with areas of human behaviour that creates the biggest roadblocks to peace, to individuals, families and society. And that's why it is so significant that God began the fifth, this uh, fifth commandment in this section by dealing first with the family. The very first and foundational institution that God created. And up to this day, Satan continues to attack the family vigorously. But the good news is this. You and I don't live as children who are powerless. You and I live as children who can counter these attacks by going back to the Word of God to obey His guidelines for the family and relationships at large. And so this morning, we will look at our relationship with our moms and our dads. What does it mean to honour your parents? You know, there's really no age limit nor time limit to this commandment. Today, you're sitting here, you might be 20, and your parents are 40, you honour your parents. You might be 60 here today, and your parents are 85. The commandment stands to honour your mom and your dad. So how am I to honour my parents? To honour is to elevate one's status. To honour is to also understand the significance of, to promote, to give respect and admiration. And the way you and I honour our parents changes over time, depending on what, uh, which life stage you're in. Very well captured by the video clip earlier. And, um, Depending on which life stage you're in, the emphasis and the expression of how you honour will differ. So let's jump right in and begin with children. There are seven-year-olds and older here. Yes, there are children in our midst. So all of us begin as a child. 
So as a child, I honour my parents by obeying and respecting them. Ephesians 6.1 says, Children, obey your parents. This is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. Respect for authority begins nowhere else but at home. This is a critical lesson that every child must learn because it determines how well you're going to be doing in school, at work, in society. The way you connect and relate with people, it all begins in the home. The child who grows up saying, no one and nobody tells me what to do is going to have a hard time later on. Why? Because oftentimes, you and I, we have to do what somebody tells us to do, whether we want it, want to or not, whether we like it or not. Learning to obey from childhood helps us to establish a lifetime pattern of obeying rules, principles and laws in school and in society. Paul expands on this sub uh, subject in Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in the Lord in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Our obedience to our parents is a result of our obedience to God, and that delights Him. Even Jesus, the Son of God, obeys His parents. Now, the command to honour our parents includes treating them with respect. For many of our parents who have yet to know Christ, the window to our faith is revealed in the way we treat them, in our attitude towards them. So examine the way we talk to our parents, our tone, our volume, do we talk back? Do we speak to our parents in a defiant way most of the time? Examine that. Do we roll our eyes at them as though, you know, telling them, giving them the message, I know better, stop talking? Gracians, examine our attitude towards them. It says and it reveals a lot about our character our Christ-likeness. And even if your parents have fallen short, honour them and you still respect them. And I'll talk a little a bit more about this in a while. In time, the children sitting in our midst here, you're going to hit your 20s, your 30s, and now you're a young adult and there are many young adults in our midst. So as a young adult, I honour my parents by accepting and appreciating them. You see, the older you get, the more clearly you see the hang-ups and the flaws of your parents. You begin to see that a lot clearly. But it becomes of utmost importance that we become to accept them despite, despite of their faults. And you should remember how many times they had to put up with things in your life that you have disappointed them. Why should I accept my parents? Perhaps some of you might be quietly questioning. You say, I didn't have a choice. Well, folks, neither did they. The fact of the matter is, you have your parents and they have you. And that's why acceptance is vital. And that's what family is all about, acceptance. You cannot choose your parents, neither can they, but you can choose to accept them. We choose to accept them. But acceptance doesn't mean that, you know, we ignore their mistakes. Acceptance doesn't mean that you endorse or agree with everything that they have done. The accepting 
or acceptance is about realizing that God used them to give you life. Linus sang about that, thanking his mom about how he, she gave him life. You see, moms and dads, you, they gave you something that nobody else in the world could give you, your life. You owe them your life. And regardless of how they've treated you growing up and the parenting skills that they deployed, God chose them to bring you into the world. And so don't let their mistakes or their failures take the life out of you. Accepting is also about listening to what they have to say. Now, as a young adult, you're not necessarily bound by the advice, but you don't despise it. Your parents have grown and have learned a whole lot more than you have. Proverbs 23 verse 22 instructs us to listen to your father who gave you your life and do not despise your mother. So young adults have the courtesy of listening attentively to your parents. And don't tune them out. Make every effort to listen and to value their input rather than to only pick and choose what you want to listen to or what you want to do. And the accepting also involves forgiving. We are bound to be heard by each other, intentionally or unintentionally. And let me just share a little uh, background to my life. Do you know, I've never known um, a tender, loving moment between my mother and my father. They live under the same roof, but in separate rooms for as long as I can remember, since young. Um, the norm is to witness them quarrel and fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean fight with words, I mean fight physically. It, it's almost like, you know, looking back, funnily, I, I can say it and laugh at it now, but I was crying nonstop then. It's like watching a kung fu movie every day of your life. Anything they can grab hold of, they will throw at each other, including the knives. And these fights went on for years, even after all seven of us became adults. Another incident that really marked me. As a preschooler, I was around about six years old. My dad would take me out on his dates, but his dates were not with my mom. His dates were with another woman. And I would be bribed with sweets and candies that I liked so that I could keep mom about this extramarital relationship. And to add to that, my oldest brother, who's 14 years my senior, he introduced us to Jesus. All seven of us, we're so grateful we came to know Christ at a tender age. But my parents were very steeped in another religion. And so they objected to us becoming Christians. And so the belt has a very special meaning to me. As the youngest, I suppose it was the easiest for my father. Whenever he caught us going to church or reading the Bible, he would just grab me. And as a little girl, imagine the little girl, okay? Two hands. One hand just holding me. And the other hand would be, I'll, I'll be belted. And if he, if he feels like it, remember the old-time bottled drinks, the caps. The caps would be laid on the floor and we'll just kneel on them for as long as he wish. And that's the kind of environment that I grew up in. And you could say it is much easier to blame 
to blame your parents for your emotional baggage than to honour them. And today, Gracians, if there are any one of you here, if you are still hurting or you are still being resentful and bitter over the things your parents did wrong to you, may I urge you, let go of these sentiments. Disallow these sentiments from shaping your life. You know, Proverbs 20, verse 20 tells us, God puts out the light of the man who curses his father or mother. We might not curse them verbally, but it's all happening in the heart. God gave us parents for a purpose. And He can even take the wounds, the hurts, and turn it around, provide it, and bring out the good out of it, provided you choose, and only if you choose to respond in the right way. You honour your parents when you forgive them for what they've done wrong, and you choose to focus on what they've done right. For all that my father has done, I know he was a good provider as best as he could. You know, God says, not only do I accept my parents, the good, the bad, but I am to appreciate them. How do I appreciate them? You know, some of you have super parents, godly parents, and it makes it real easy for you to appreciate them. But for some of you, it's a challenge. And I would suggest that there are at least two things you can appreciate your parents for, regardless of how they were. Firstly, you can appreciate them for their effort. Parenting is demanding and exhausting. As a parent of two young adults of almost 23 now, I have a new appreciation of my, what my parents went through after I became a mom. When was the last time you took the effort to appreciate your parents for just putting up with you? The second thing that you can appreciate them for is the sacrifice. You know, many of us have had parents who scraped, saved, and and sacrifice to provide and care for us. They forgo and they often choose to do without many things so that you can have the comfort and luxury. And for many of us who have had the blessing of a stay-at-home mom, let's not forget the opportunity caused to their career advancement when they chose to give up their jobs to totally devote themselves to raise you up. Folks, let's fast forward now. One more decade, two, three, a few more decades, and you are now a middle-ager. You are now an adult. As an adult, I honour my parents by affirming and not abandoning them. For many parents, the older that they get, the less respect they have. They are of age now and they are no longer as wanted in the marketplace. And over the years, most of their friends might also be passing on. Their grown children are so busy with their own families. And truth is, they might often feel very alone as empty nesters. Our aged parents have needs needs that are often not of the material kind. Our aged parents have very deep needs, and sometimes the deepest needs is that they need to know, they need to hear from you that they have made some contribution to your life. So let them know. Let them know through your words. Let them know through your actions. Affirm your parents 
by making time for them and staying in touch with them. You know, in this juncture, I, I, I like us to uh, just turn our attention to the screen behind me for this uh, short clip. Go 我怕,我怕好啊,我怕來在我了。There are a whole lot of things that money cannot buy. And perhaps some of us ought to pick up that phone more often and call your parents. And perhaps some of us ought to put aside the personal pursuits in our life so that we can give up and make time for our parents, to visit them more often, to share with them the details of your life. I assure you, they are very interested. It just goes unspoken, unexpressed many a times. And affirming them also involves listening to their counsel, getting their input, to just let them know that we value all that they have to say. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 tells us, Do not rehold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Affirm your parents for the rest of your life, for the, as long as they are alive. Do your best. Affirm them all that you can while you still have the opportunity. And we honour by affirming we honour by not abandoning, but by caring for them. You know, 1 Timothy 5.8 puts it, that, you know, the way you treat your older, uh, elderly parents is a demonstration of your true faith. If not, we are worse than the pre-believers who fulfils these obligations. Now, that's a strong rebuke. It is our sole responsibility to care for our parents. And God intends for us to honour them, to continue to honour our parents long after we've left our home of origin and way into 
the times and seasons when they have age, even more. And they may require us to care for them physically, support them financially, even more during this season. Care for them for as long as they need it. Folks, such is the family life cycle. There was a time in your life where they fed you, they bathed you, they cared for you. And as our parents and grandparents age and become too frail to care for themselves, the roles reverse where it calls for you now to feed them, to bathe them, and to care for them. And the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 4, they should put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for that is good and acceptable before God. And that might mean many things, many different application points for different one of us depending on our situation and our parents. It can range from being proactive to ensure home repairs are made, they're living well and comfortably. It might mean accompanying them for medical checkups, taking them out for meals, or simply pampering them. But the point is this, your responsibility and mine is to make sure that they are cared for. And so in many ways, I live with the weight of regret. And I say that because I must admit that I could have done so much more before my father passed away some 17 years ago. Now you see, though I have for, you know, forgiven my father, Reconciled, forgiven my father for all that has happened over my growing up years. Something that happened is this. I have allowed the memories to determine the extent of how I honour. In fact, I recall there have been moments when I even justified that, hey, you know, some minimal effort on my part is already good enough given what I've been through. And so my lack of honour affected, it affected the way I treated him when he was still alive. And that brings me to the heart of my message today. And that is having a heart that honours. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17 tells us, Honour all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honour the King. You see, for many of us, we think that honour goes to people who deserve it. People who have earned it. People who are honourable. And many of us have learned that trust, honour, respect and even love is earned. But the Bible says to honour all people. And that includes people who don't deserve it. Those who didn't earn it. God's command to honour our parents has no exception clause. There are no buts. It is not a recommendation. It is not a suggestion. It is a commandment, period. But what if my mom or my dad was abusive? What if they were like strangers? They were around, but I was neglected. What if they abandoned me and left the family? God says it plainly, honour them regardless. Christians, there are two ways that we can bring an inheritance into our life. One is through unforgiveness and the other is through honour. You bring an inheritance into your life from your parents and your past generations by what connects you to them. What you connect to is what you inherit. And so ever wondered where you get all that glory, that honour and power? 
to give to God. When you sing the song, you know, we will give, you know, we will give you honor and glory. Where do you think you get that from? It's like, you know, it's like us telling Bill Gates, Bill Gates, I give you money. However much I have to give to God is a scrap. It's a scrape, except that he first honoured me even though I was not honourable. I was undeserving. And in doing so, he changed something in the relationship. He changed something about who I am in the relationship and that is what honour does. Honour changes the relationship. Honour reaches out into your life and says, I transfer the status of my life to yours and I elevate you. That's what the Lord has done to you and me. We are now sons and daughters. We are co-heirs, co-laborers with Christ. We are now part of the royal family and your status has been elevated, not because you and I were deserving, but we are elevated because God has given that to us. As a result, every single one of us, we now have the capability to give honour. We have the capability to give honour in any relationship. And there is a freedom to be who I am in Christ and bring that honour to the relationship. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how you treat me. I will never allow the way you conduct yourself to conduct me. I will never allow, you know, even if you're untrustworthy, I'll never allow you or stop me from living in an open, honest and empowering way towards you. Your character flaws will never control the way and the essential core of who I am. And I'm not going to allow how honouring you are to determine how honouring I am. You know, this is a commandment with a promise. All of God's commandments are given to us for our good. But this one is especially highlighted by God for the blessings that it brings. Doctors, psychologists, we all know and agree that a bitter, resentful heart produces all kinds of illnesses and stress. And so it's no surprises that people who get along with their parents will have far less stress in their lives. And that's why God promises that in honouring our parents, we increase our potential for long life with more peace and joy. But does that mean that, you know, this promise of God will guarantee a long life to every individual who honours his parents? Well, apart from honouring our parents, can I just say that there are other factors of that comes to play as to how long we live, like self-care and what we eat and what we put into our body, okay? The length of a God-appointed mission on earth is not the same for everyone. And the time required for each one of us to complete our God-given mission is the primary factor that will determine the length of life. Much as God will bless us with long life as we honour our parents. And so looking back now, you know, I believe that God has sent me on a longer term uh, mission here on earth. Why? Because I almost didn't make it some 51 years ago. I was an oops baby. That means it was, it was an accident. There's seven of us, I was number seven. And my mom, as, you know, later on in life, as I grew to understand, 
she did and tried always and means to abort me. But I stuck and da-da, here I am. And I say, you can imagine the root of rejection ran so deep in my life. The frequent caning and having an emotionally distant mom was my norm in my growing up years. From childhood right up to the teenage years, that was my norm. And in short, I had no idea what mother and daughter bonding is all about because it was just totally absent. And so I stand here today as a living testimony. Years into my adulthood, grace of God upon me, I underwent a healing process. And that's when I realized and totally understand and appreciated my mom for all that she had to go through. She was but ta simply taking it out on me, trying to wrestle and live out her agony of a loveless marriage. And so from that place of healing, I made a choice. This was like second chance for me now. I made a choice to go beyond forgiveness and take proactive steps to love her, to honour my mom. And that may spell, you know, uh, as best as I can, food delivery. So we don't rely on food bender, but it's a personal delivery, uh, accompanying her for medical checkups, and the list goes on. And today I celebrate a good relationship with my mom. I have a picture behind, yes, it's all that, okay? Uh, it's rare to be able to take a picture with my now 85 year old mom and my family. And today, my mom absolutely trusts me, loves me, the way she knows how. And I get to live to this day and beyond, I believe, to fulfill God's appointed mission for my life. And so, folks, when we honour our parents, you can take that off now. <laughs> Still staring into the picture. When we honour our parents, we the children, we are the beneficiaries. And this is the commandment with the wonderful promise that life will go well with and for us if we simply obey and walk in it. Any fractured or broken relationship it, it's, you know, in our family, it becomes a target for our enemy. Because our enemy thrives and is empowered when we allow relationships to be taken down, not from a place of honour, but taken down to a mere functional level. Honour is tested most when there's disappointment, when there's failure, when there's disagreement but we must not allow them to affect our choice to honour. When there's no honour, people are afraid. And when people are afraid, they want control. 1 John 4, 18 tells us, perfect love casts out all fear. Likewise, fear casts out all love. Having a heart of honour my friends, is so vitally, vitally important. It's so important because it comes right out from heaven. Honour is the currency of heaven. And it counters the works of the enemy to destroy relationships. Honour your father and mother. Honour all people. Give honour wherever you go. In so doing, we create heaven on earth. We bring that aspect of heaven to earth and we keep it there. Let Christ be honoured in all our relationships. Can I just invite you all, just close your eyes and bow your heads.
Abba Father, you have spoken so clearly through this one commandment about what it means to honour my father and honour my mother. And so in just next few minutes, Father, allow, allow each one of us, no matter where we are, whatever our experiences have been as children to our parents, that we allow you, your still small voice, to just speak to us, that we can respond as you desire. For some of you here this today, this has been a rather painful message. It's easy to honour when your father and mother are godly people, loving people. But for some of you, you have had parents who hurt you deeply. And perhaps your life was in some sense, devastated by it. Some of you might have suffered mistreatment and neglect. Abuse, perhaps. Whether emotional and some even sexual. And some of you have been abandoned by either one parent or the other. as a result of divorce. But the Bible says, honour your father and mother. Seems like a hard and a tall or hard thing to do, a tall order, but we were never meant to respond in the flesh 